The classic way to traverse a linked list is to put a pointer on the head and to use a loop that keeps running while the pointer is not null. But what if that pointer never becomes null? We would have an infinite loop. This case happens when there is a cycle, when there is a node that points to a previous node. A reasonable thing to do then is to check if the linked list that we are about to traverse doesn't have a cycle in it, to avoid the infinite loop. And that's why we need a cycle detection algorithm. The first solution that may come in your mind to detect a cycle in a linked list is to use a set of visited nodes. And if we step on a node that is already in the set, it means that we've seen it before, so there is a cycle, we return that node. In code, we put a pointer on the head, we create a set of visited nodes, then while the pointer is not null, if we find it in visited, then we return it because we found the cycle, we already visited the actual node. Else, we just put the actual node in visited and we move to the next one. After the loop, if the pointer became null without finding an already visited node, then there is no cycle, we return null. The time complexity of this function is O of n, where n is the number of nodes, because we're just traversing the list. But the space complexity is also of n, because we're storing all the nodes in the set. What if I tell you that we can detect a cycle in O of n time but O of 1 space, by using the Floyd Cycle Detection Algorithm? also called the tortoise and hare algorithm. The algorithm itself isn't that hard to understand, but the confusing part is to understand why does it work. So we will first see how does the algorithm work, then we will discuss the mathematical proof. This algorithm uses a slow pointer and a fast pointer. This is why it's also called the tortoise and hare algorithm. The tortoise represents the slow pointer and the hare represents the fast pointer. They're called slow and fast here because the slow one will move by one node at a time, but the fast one will move by two nodes at a time. The first step of the algorithm is to let them walk that way until they meet or fast becomes null. If fast becomes null, then we're in the case where there is no cycle, and it's always fast that reaches the end because it's moving twice as fast as slow. But if there is a cycle, even if fast is moving twice as fast as slow, it will keep looping in the cycle until slow catches him. So, if slow and fast meet, it means that there is a cycle. But we still need to find the entry point of the cycle, and tortoise and hat don't necessarily meet there as you can see, so to find it, we put slow in the head of the linked list and we let them walk until they meet again, but this time, both of them move by one node at a time. And now, they're both in the entry point of the cycle, we return one of them. And the amazing thing is that they will always meet again in the entry point, that's what we will see in the mathematical proof. Ok, here is a linked list that contains a cycle. We'll put our slow and fast pointers and they keep walking until they meet. Now, we can divide the linked list into different parts. We have the part before the cycle, let's name it x, the part before the meeting point, let's name it y, and the part starting from the meeting point, let's name it z. We can notice that the distance before the meeting point plus the distance starting from the meeting point is equal to the length of the cycle. We write L equal to Y plus Z. We will need this information later. Ok, now let's analyze the distance traversed by the slow and fast pointer before they meet. What happens is that fast traverses the part before the cycle, X, then traverses the cycle a certain amount of times, we write C1 times L, C1 is a constant and L is the length of the cycle. Then traverses the path before the meeting point y. So f, the distance traversed by the fast pointer, is x plus c1 times l plus y. And for the slow pointer, it also traverses the path before the cycle, x, then loops a certain number of times, and here we write c2 times l, where c2 is a constant that can be different from c1, because slow and fast pointers can loop a different number of times. Then, traverses the path before the meeting point y. So S, the distance traversed by the slow pointer, is X plus C2 times L plus Y. We also know that fast is moving twice as fast as slow, so fast traverses twice the distance of slow. We write F is equal to 2 times S. We replace S and F by their respective expressions. We find 2 times X plus C2 times L plus Y equal to X plus C1 times L plus Y. We distribute the 2, we find 2x plus 2c2 times l plus 2y equal to x plus c1 times l plus y. We take x and y from the right side to the left side and 2c2 times l from the left side to the right side. We reverse the sign obviously. 
to x minus x is x to y minus 1 is y and c1 times l minus 2c2 times l is c1 minus 2c2 times l. We get x plus y equal to c1 minus 2c2 times l. We take the y to the other side and we get x equal to c1 minus 2 times c2 times l minus y. What does this mean? It means that the distance before the cycle is equal to a certain amount of loops minus the distance before the meeting point. c1 minus 2c2 times l is equal to c1 minus 2c2 minus 1 times l plus l. And c1 is a constant and c2 is a constant, so we can just replace c1 minus 2c2 minus 1 by another constant c3. Now we have x equal to c3 times l plus l minus y. And remember that at the beginning of this part, I told you that l is equal to y plus z. So if we replace the second l by y plus z, we get x equal to c3 times l plus y plus z minus y. We remove plus y and minus y and we get x equal to c3 times l plus z. We found out that the distance before the cycle is equal to a constant amount of looping that can be zero like in this example, plus the distance after the meeting point. This is why if we take back slow to the head and we keep walking one node at a time, they meet in the middle, which is the entry point of the cycle, the node we're searching for. It's because now slow and fast traverse the same distance, slow traverse x, and fast traverse c3 times l plus z. And that's why the fluid cycle detection algorithm works. If slow and hand meet, it means that there is a cycle, so we do the second step to find its entry point. I know that some of you are still not convinced by the c3 times l part, but look at this example, where z is smaller than x. After they meet, we take slow back to the head and look what happens. Slow traverses x, and fast traverses z then keeps looping while waiting to slow to reach him, thus the c3 times l part. It loops a certain amount of times. And you can see that they meet in the entry point of the cycle. In code, we put two points slow and fast on the head, we put a boolean that will be set to true if they meet, and we start. Now while fast still has at least one node after it to be able to jump, we move slow forward by one node, slow becomes slow.next, and fast by two nodes, fast becomes fast.next.next. And if they meet, we set met to true and we break the loop. After the loop, if they didn't meet, then there is no cycle, we return null. Else, we take back slow to the head, then while slow and fast didn't meet, we move them both by one node at a time. After they meet, we return one of them because they're both on the start node of the cycle. For the time complexity, we get an O of n time complexity where n is the number of nodes because we're just traversing the length list a constant amount of times. And for the space complexity, we're just using two variables of type node, and two is a constant, we get an O of 1 space complexity, better than the first solution. Ok, now we know the Floyd cycle detection algorithm, but can we use it to solve all the problems? Yes, we will use it to solve the find the duplicate problem. We are given n plus 1 numbers between 1 and n inclusive, and we are asked to find the duplicate number. We will always have a duplicate because of the pigeonhole principle. We have n plus 1 elements and only n possible values, so at least two elements have to share the same value. Here again, we can solve the problem by just using a set of visited values, and as soon as we find the value that we've seen before, we return it. We get an O of n time and space complexity solution. But now, let's represent the elements of this array with a linked list in a way that each node points to the index of its value. 4 will point to the element at index 4 which is 6, 3 will point at the element at index 3 which is 8, 7 will point at the element at index 7 which is 1, and so on for the remaining nodes. This is a mess, let me just reposition the nodes to better see what's happening. This is better. What do you notice? We can notice that we got a linked list that contains a cycle, and the index of the entry point of the cycle represents a duplicate value. Why? Because a cycle is formed when two nodes point to the same node, and because in our array we have duplicates with the same value, too, then they will both point to the same node. And this is why we will use the Floyd cycle detection algorithm to find the entry point of the cycle and return its index. Now you may tell me, but we still need space to create the linked list. Interesting question. But the linked list that is on the screen is here just to help you visualize. We don't need to make it. In code, we'll just use indexes to move between the nodes. 
we put two pointers slow and fast on the head, which is the index of the first element, zero, and here we are guaranteed to find a cycle because of the pigeonhole principle. In other words, we are sure that slow and fast will meet at some point, so we just write while true. While true, we move slow by one node, slow becomes R of slow, we move fast by two nodes, fast becomes R of R of fast, and if they meet, we break the loop. Now we take back slow to the head, the index 0, and while they didn't meet, we move them both by one node. Slow becomes R of slow and fast becomes R of fast. After the loop, they both represent the index of the entry point of the cycle, which is the duplicate value, we return one of them. And we got an O of n time solution, where n is the number of elements of the array and O of one space, because we use two int variables only. Know that the problem we solved here, the find the duplicate problem, is one of the 50 problems that are discussed in my 50 popular coding interview problems course. So if you like my teaching style and want to become better in algorithms and data structures, check the link in description. We reached the end of this video, I hope that I've been able to explain to you the fluid cycle detection algorithm, tell me in comments if it's the case, and please subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.